Hi everyone and welcome to KB4 for Girls Foundation. Today we have an interview with Johanna who is our new ambassador. Hi Johanna. Hi everyone and welcome to my backyard in Punta Chana, Panama. Thank you so much for having us. Um, Johanna, will you be able to tell us a bit more about who you are and a bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm 28 years old, uh, originally from Sweden in Scandinavia. I spent the last dec li decade living abroad. Uh, I spent a couple of years living in London uh, in the UK and uh, I spent some time in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, and recently I lived a few years in Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, a few months back I decided to pause my corporate career as a management consultant to go and make a full-time commitment to kitesurfing and to improve my skills. Because for me, um, my personal goals are just as important as my professional goals. Uh, and I got an opportunity to come here to Punta Chame with the rider experience team to uh, go and do kitesurfing every day. Sounds like you've had a great couple of months. Yeah, it's been this season has been amazing. The wind has been blowing consistently and strong basically every day. So it's been really good. So Johanna, we obviously we all know that kite surfing is not the easiest sport to learn. So will you be able to tell us a bit more about the challenges you've been facing learning how to kite surf and also have you managed to overcome them? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, all kite surfers can sign off on that it's not an easy sport to learn. Um, I've been I struggled a lot in the beginning and it, I reached a point where I actually told myself that okay Johanna you love this sport but is it really for you? Um, but uh, a friend of mine he kept pushing me pushing me and, and gave me a few uh, tips so I gave myself a second chance uh, uh, and went out on the water again and then I had this massive click moment and I think you will hear about this click moment from other kiteboarders as well and it was just since then just been in, completely in love with the sport and I try to spend all my available time out on the water. So you, now you're mentioning water but obviously also the wind. So kite surfing includes two natural forces which you can't control. So have you ever faced any danger when you kite surf? Yeah, I mean obviously it's it was a little bit scary in the beginning um, because I've, I've, I haven't done any water sports or board sports previously and adding to the fact that you can't really uh, control the, the natural forces, it's, it was a little bit scary in the beginning. But I was uh, surrounded with, with people that I trust and that was looking after me. Um, and it, it's, it's just such a rewarding sport. And I think so I, I used to be a, a show jumper with horses. And I think that uh, it's a similar sport because you have this element of uncertainty. If it's a horse that has its own feelings or if it's a kite in the wind, um, and it's just when you when you reach to that point when you can when you can be one with that element and actually be able to to uh, to read it and feel it and and go with it. That's uh, such a rewarding feeling, and that's why I love this sport. It really sounds like you've learned a lot. Um, do you feel like there's certain elements of kite surfing that you've been able to apply to different parts of your life? Yeah, I mean, it might sound cliche, but you you can do so much more than you think you can. And I think that could be applied to anything you, that you do in life. Uh, if you if you don't give up and continue to, to work against your goals, um, it can happen. Um, and I think that's what gives me a lot about kite surfing is that you put up the, these goals and you, and you practice really hard and you, you, you can actually do it. Um, and that's uh, that, that aspect you can apply in, in your work life or your personal life. So I think that's, that's a good lesson for me. So you mentioned goals. Um, now that you've learned how to kite surf, what is driving you to continue and what are your next steps within kite surfing? Obviously this is a sport you can develop so much in and there's always constantly something you can learn or develop or uh, a trick to perform. To, uh, to improve or anything and and but what is also can be a little bit challenging is that if you if you learn a trick then uh, you might get comfortable and not push yourself anymore so what I try to do is that I always um, 
set up goals for myself if it's a trick I need to improve or if it's uh, if it's a new trick I need to learn I try to, to put a timeline for that and, and to push myself but adding to that I think it's also very important to um, to be able to talk about the sport and talk through the tricks with uh, uh, with beginners maybe learn uh, give beginners tricks that you struggle with yourself or surround yourself with better kiteboarders that you can be inspired from so uh, in a sense that's a two-way street and that you can always uh, develop in even though you've been doing it for years or if you're a beginner so that's what i, I really like about the sport so you you uh, you were talking about timeline, and obviously now the the season is almost over in Panama. Unfortunately. <laughs> so what what are your next plans? Uh, so this summer I've been um, lucky to to represent kiteboarding for girls uh, on the Rider Experiences uh, kiteboarding sailing cruises, uh, and we will do. Um, we will do two trips, one in the beginning of June in Greece and one in the end of June in Sardinia. And it will be a week packed with loads of kite surfing. We will sail to remote islands, uh, we will snorkel, we will do stand up paddle boarding, we'll do some yoga, eat good food, have drinks on, on deck, watch the sunset. And it will just be an amazing week with uh, cool girls. Well, the, I'm looking forward to. it definitely sounds like uh, an experience worth looking for. Yeah, I hope you girls can make it with me. So thank you so much, Johanna. We have one last question. Uh, KB4 for Girls is obviously super excited to have you as our ambassador. Um, but the last question is, what is driving you to become a part of this network? I actually had a, a very um, nice hands-on experience of this a few months ago um, where I spent a week in a house with a group of very enthusiastic kiteboarding girls um, and it was such a nice experience we had a great vibe and I've never experienced that before with girls because um, obviously this is a this is a relatively ma male dominated sport uh, and just being able to share that with other uh, kite girls is just uh, an amazing experience and we were pushing each other on the water um, having competitions who learned the trick the fastest we had so much fun on the beach helping each other on in the house you can just with girls you can just talk about anything and everything and it just just creates a, a really really nice environment uh, to be in um, and that's why it's so good as well with kiteboarding for girls is that we we need to increase the ratio between men and and, and, and women in the sport um, and that's why I really like to be an ambassador to to push more girls to get into the fabulous world world of kite surfing uh, so I'm really looking forward to this thank you so much again Johanna and thank you for having us in Panama thank you for coming all, see you this summer all the best of luck